Hello dear friends, welcome this Saturday morning live on Facebook from Hyderabad city, India. I am John Roger Anthony, Catholic lay missionary of Holy Spirit Interactive, a Catholic lay apostolate. I am very happy to begin this weekend men's retreat with all of you live streaming on Facebook. And it has been a wonderful week because we've had a very fruitful women's weekend retreat last weekend. And the fruit of it was seen by testimonies and feedback from so many people who've said that the talks have really helped them grow in becoming extraordinary witnesses for Christ as women. And I'm very happy that my wife and I are here with you live on Facebook to help our brothers to become extraordinary witnesses for Christ. I am thankful to all of you who will be watching this live stream and also watching this later on on YouTube, um, especially those who are really hungry for the Lord, hungry to become true disciples of Jesus, really thirsting to become evangelical people, people who really understand the need of proclaiming the gospel through their own lives and their words so that the whole world may experience lumen gentium, light of all nations, and that is Jesus. I am thankful to all of you who have watched the uh, recently concluded watch party uh, where we had our musician brother uh, Roger. So, uh, I'm sorry, our musician brother Rohit, who uh, led praise and worship uh, from his parish here in Hyderabad and um, uh, allowing us to experience the presence of God, be conscious of the presence of God and prepare ourselves to have this retreat and consume the word that God is willing to give us today and tomorrow. So if you still haven't uh, invited your friends, please do so right away. The poster on my Facebook page will give you the link to my Facebook profile. You can share that link with your friends and family and bring them and add them on to this live um, Facebook stream. I now invite my wife, Jessie John, to welcome you to this weekend men's retreat. Hello everyone, good morning. We are so happy that we are here and we really thank God for this wonderful day and these two days that he is going to abundantly bless us and especially all the men out there who are listening and who are watching and uh, we pray in turn that this journey with the Lord for these two days will truly bring abundance of grace that we need for every day of our life and this grace of God will enable you so that to lead your family and uh, truly be that Catholic leader, Catholic men whom God has called and chosen to be on a mission. All right. Thank you so much. So again, I remind you, if you haven't yet invited uh, your friends and family or if you know of a person, of a brother who is really in need of the word of God so that he can be set free from whatever bondage or whatever uh, dissatisfaction or negativity that he is experiencing in his life, please send the link to that person and let that person benefit for free from the light and truth of Jesus. So let us begin our first session with a short prayer. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Come Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of the faithful, and enkindle in us the fire of thy love. Send forth thy Spirit, and we shall be created, and thou shalt renew the face of the earth. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy, Holy Mary, Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now in the hour of our death. Amen. All glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. All right. So it's really wonderful. I'm very happy to reach out to you through Facebook Live. And I'm extremely um, excited because Probably this is the first time that I am reaching out uh, like this online uh, specifically for a retreat only for men and therefore there are many things that, are, that have been going on in my mind. There have, there have been many themes and topics that I have been uh, jostling in my mind to uh, present to you but then I think um, just two days may not be sufficient 
to share all that God would probably be wanting us to talk about as to what he expects from us men, um, you know, as his children. So I, along with my wife and uh, uh, a couple of my other friends who are missionaries and who are preachers, we've decided to just handpick some uh, topics which probably are the need of the hour and are part and parcel of our daily lives. So we will focus on topics which can really uh, address some of the common things that men go through and men share and experience in their lives and see how the light of God can penetrate into those areas of life. My dear friends, one of my favorite saints or rather a person who has really uh, formed and crafted my mind and my heart uh, to a very large extent is Pope St. John Paul II and he has some amazing things to speak in the life of the church and to all uh, humanity because his words don't just penetrate the heart of the person who is a believer but it also questions and convicts the hearts of the non-believers as well and so many of such non-believers have come to become believers because of the witness and testimony of the life of Pope St. John Paul II. So I'd like to share a few thoughts as we begin this retreat from this great man, this extraordinary Pope who is known as John Paul the Great, um, on how his thought process has been to see the light of Christ in man. One of the things that he uh, really emphasizes or has emphasized throughout his pontificate and also his life before being a Pope as a young man in Poland who has experienced the traumas of World War II, having lost his parents as well at a very young age, his friends who, who have also been Jews, and then having experienced the time of being a, a daily wage laborer in uh, the, the stone mines, in the quarries, and having seen difficulties and a fear and danger from face to face in life this man actually brings out the core and the essence of the existence of the human person and that is love he has so many things to speak about in love be his encyclicals his apostolic letters his talks his his sermons his homilies and his uh, uh, daily audiences in rome and so many of his writings, his, his speeches to the young people, none of them have escaped the idea or the importance of the virtue, the gift of love that God has given to all of mankind because he himself is love. God himself is love. So I'd like to first call to our mind, every brother of mine who is watching, let us remind ourselves that we are children of love, which means we are children of God and God is love. So if we are children of love, we need to first and foremost focus on manifesting, sorry, manifesting love. We need to first and foremost um, look into our lives whether and see whether or not our lives are filled with God's love so that what we have is what we can share. John Paul II says, what really matters in life is that we are loved by Christ and that we love him in return. There are many things which men consider as important in life and for various reasons they consider those things to be important. So do women as well. But for men, most of the time it is all about responsibility and it is all about doing things for the good of everyone else or trying to take the lead. Subconsciously, men somehow think that they should step up, they should come forward to lead and to take care, to, to hold responsibilities. So many things matter to them. For example, um, uh, a good salary, a good living, um, materialistic things which can keep people around them happy, doing things for the good of others in terms of materialistic comfort. Many things matter. But what really matters, according to St. John Paul II, is that, what we, uh, that we are loved by Christ and that we love him in return. Many a times we fail to realize or we fail to uh, believe, if I, uh, that's the proper word, we fail to believe that Christ loves us, God loves us. And the re one of the reasons why we fail to believe that God loves us is because we consider love all the time to be something tangible. 
we need to see we need to feel love we need to understand from our practical sense love but that is not all the time possible to experience the love of God in our life God's love is given to us through the Holy Spirit not always through physical ways through tangible ways God's love is also given to us by the mere fact that we are confident courageous bold faithful trusting in him in times when everything seems to be falling apart that is also the way God shows that he loves us my dear friends it is important for us to realize that God loves us it's it is important for us to know that we are loved by Christ you know there is this um, there is this movie which had come a few years back called Noah and um, in this movie um, the Pharaoh goes and speaks to his his child who is now sleeping in the cradle and he tells the child son you sleep so well because you know you are loved I felt that was very very touching a person who is at peace probably is like that only because he knows that he is loved when you and I believe and we are convinced that there is at least one person in this world who loves us we feel satisfied we feel contented even if the whole world rejects me but if there's one person who loves me my life is satisfied I'm happy in many in many of our lives it that that one person could be our mother our father it could be our brother it could be that one friend who always stays with us no matter what we do no matter how bad our choices in life have been this person remains with us this person constantly believes in us this person understands us and that's because this person loves us and when we experience this kind of unconditional love from a person we know that our life is satisfactory we are motivated uh, to get on to the right path if we are living or uh, or strolling on the wrong path because of the love which motivates us so it is essential to believe it is essential to believe that God loves us what one person can do imagine what more can the love of God do to us even if nobody is around us if there are people who have no one to love them if they are just uh, a person in a life in a who feel like they are people there are they are a person in an island where there is nobody even though they're living in this world surrounded by scores of people but still find themselves to be a person alone on an island deserted island even such a person should believe that God loves that person because the very existence the very source of existence of every person is from God we have come into this world because of the gift of life that God has placed in us and he does so with love that is the reason that we need to believe that God loves us that we are loved by Christ and the other aspect to believe that Christ loves us every man should believe that Christ loves us is because he gave his life for us Jesus died for us and he before dying Jesus spent three years of his life that at least that is what is accounted in in scriptures because we don't know what Jesus has done before he began his public ministry there must be so many marvelous incredible unfathomable things that our Lord would have done uh, before his public ministry but in those three years of his public ministry Jesus spent every moment of his life as a man in this world being an obedient son of the father because he knows that the father loved him and he returned back or he reciprocated that love he responded to that love with his love to the father and to the people that the father entrusted to Jesus in the same way my dear brothers and also my dear sisters who are watching me right now God loves us and he has entrusted people in our care that we may love them as God loves us if you believe that God loves you you will also be motivated and convicted by the Holy Spirit to love other people if you don't understand that God loves you or if you don't believe that God loves you you will still be not giving yourself totally in love to the other person not only to the other person even to yourself because it is important for us to love ourselves 
It is important for us to love ourselves. Why is it important to love ourselves? It's because if we do not love ourselves, we will not be able to respect ourselves. We will not be able to consider ourselves important, not from a selfish point of view, but from the point of view of a person who is also having the capacity, ability to contribute into this world. So if we don't respect ourselves, if we don't consider ourselves of having any dignity, if we don't consider ourselves of any value, or if we don't consider ourselves uh, to be someone who has the potential to contribute to the better of this world, we will not love ourselves. And when we don't love ourselves, we don't have something that we can't, that we can give to other people. That is the reason why Pope John Paul II says, what really matters in life is, where we know that Jesus loves us and we love him back. When we know that Jesus loves us, we know that we are loved by God because Christ is God himself. And when we know that the creator of heaven and earth loves us, we are empowered by that love. The love of God is an empowerment. The love of God is an empowerment which helps us to bring hope into the life of people who are suffering and struggling with hopelessness. The love of God is that power which helps us to bring the promise of the word into the life of people who find no meaning in their life. The love of God is that power and that conviction which helps us to bring joy and peace into the life of people who are struggling or imprisoned in darkness of despair or disappointment or negativity. The love of God in us is that breath of life which helps us to bring liberation and freedom into the life of people who have given their life to the lies of the devil. That is why it is very important for us to believe that we are loved by Jesus and we love Jesus. That is what matters the most. And then John Paul II also continues to say that genuine love is demanding. This is very important for each one of us men to understand and to believe. Genuine love is demanding. What does it mean? Its beauty lies precisely in the demands that it makes. The beauty of love, genuine love, lies in the demands that love makes. You see, my dear friends, when you love somebody, you are expected to accept the person, first of all, as that person is and not try to mold that person according to how you would like that person to be. That is a responsibility of God. If you think that there are flaws in the person that you love, if your beloved or the object of your affection, the person whom you wish to pour out your love, is somebody who is broken, somebody who has flaws, somebody who is repeatedly committing errors and mistakes and sins, but you still want to love that person, but now you want that person to become who you want that person to be, then there are, of course, possibilities of friction because you're trying to change that person according to your will and according to your time but when you surrender that person to God it is God's responsibility to change that person with his word and his love but your patience your perseverance and your constant affection and your constant reciprocation of unconditional genuine love itself will allow that person to see truth and become the person that God wants that person to be so genuine love is demanding and the beauty is the beauty of that genuine love lies in the demands that love makes now what are the demands that genuine love makes love expects us to be sacrificing it is a it is it is very important for us to be men of sacrifice love expects us to be holy it is very important for us men to be holy love demands that we give generously it is very important for us men to understand that we are meant to be generous givers and when i'm speaking about generosity i'm not only speaking about money and wealth i'm speaking about your time i'm speaking about your talent your skills your capabilities i'm speaking about all that matters in your life which you can actually share and share generously for the good of one another. So my dear friends, only those able to make demands on themselves in the name of love can then demand love from others. This is spectacular from the words of St. John Paul II. He says, only those able to make demands on themselves in the name of love can then demand love from others. 
What does that mean? If you do not demand the best from you, now, demanding should not be always cons uh, taken from the, from the point of view of being very rigid and strict with yourself from, in, in, a way, in a way that you hurt yourself if you disappoint yourself. No, because there are many people, many men especially, who are very competitive, who are very uh, you know, rigid in, in, in being perfectionists. And if that perfection is not attained, then they traumatize themselves they hurt themselves that is not the kind of demanding aspect that i'm talking about or john paul ii is talking about or even genuine love is talking about the demanding what what the god expects from us is that we have to ensure that we strive every moment of our life to expect ourselves to give to ourselves the best that god wants to give to ourselves for example you should learn to love yourself in the best possible manner. If you think that the world speaks about uh, certain aspects, that if you adhere to those aspects, if you comply to those demands of the world, which God does not expect you to comply with, then you should not have a reason to stop loving yourselves because you're not able to follow the trend in the world. You should, in fact, love yourself because you are not following the world, but you are still being obedient to God. That is how you demand greatness from yourself. You demand authentic love from yourself. This helps you to come out of the cocoon or the bubble of, uh, of, of spirituality, which is very vague, which is very lukewarm. You need to rise above vague spirituality. You need to rise above something which is very uh, uh, in the air or something which is not very concrete. Rise above that and enter into the realm of authentic spirituality. And that will demand that you need to be very much focused and concentrated on yourself by expecting the best for yourself and from yourself. Love yourself authentically, which means look at yourself from the point of view of God. Look at yourself as God looks at you. You may be a person who is unemployed. You may be a person who is not able to give enough to your family. You may be a person who is not able to give enough to your own self, physically, emotionally, intellectually or spiritually. You may be a person who is not welcomed by many people because you are trying to follow the word of God and you are being trying to, you're trying to be faithful to the church you may be a person who is still not married and no woman is you know giving you positive responses and and you're still uh, a bachelor you may be a person who's not been very good in your academics but you have many other skills but nobody's recognizing those skills you may be a person who is right now having a friend circle who uh, of, of men who are all into bad habits or vices but you are still wanting to come out of that circle but you're not able to do because you love those men you are wanting to be their friends so you may be in the midst of many many disappointing or 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 things which are probably not very re reconciled in your heart but in spite of that you are feeling a conviction in your heart you're convinced that I am supposed to be much greater than this I need to demand something more greater than this then then my dear brother you are on the right track because you are demanding what God demands of you and there is nothing wrong in it if what you're demanding seems to be very very difficult very very um, uh, tough but rem uh, but let, let me remind you the words of Pope Benedict the 16th he said you were not born for the ordinary you were born for the extraordinary so if you were born or if you were created to do, to do extraordinary things to live an extraordinary life then rise above the standard of the normal and enter into the standard of the extraordinary where you love yourself according to the word of God. You be a righteous person. You be a person who is out there among the people who are most in need of Jesus, especially those people who are broken. And even if people despise you, then you still go ahead and serve those people. That's how you show that you demand the best out of yourself. I'd like to remind us of the fact that God is now wanting to shake our hearts he's wanting to jostle with our mind why because it's enough the time where we have been comfortable in being 
ordinary lukewarm or even satisfactory Christians because we go for mass we do our daily prayers and we're very good at our job we are able to provide what we have and what we can to our family members that's it my life is good we have to move away from that and try to see what God expects from us. God is not just expecting, he's demanding that we be holy. And that is a huge playground to enter and play in. And what, what does God first say today to you and to me? The letter of St. Paul to Galatians chapter 1 verse 10. Am I now trying to win the approval of human beings or of God? Am I now trying to win the approval of human beings or of God? Many a times men are in a race and that race has other participants and the participants in that race along with us are running in a direction where we are trying to please people and not God. We're trying to achieve things. We are in the race. We're trying to achieve that, uh, you know, success in that race, but we don't realize that we are running in, with, with, with a crowd which is running towards the things of the world, which is running towards achieving the standards which the world has set. But the word of God is asking us or reminding us and questioning us, am I now trying to win the approval of human beings or of God? Let me give you an example. I was working as the creative director for copywriting in an ad agency in Dubai. And there was a time when I had to write copy and deal with clients who, uh, whose businesses clashed with my Catholic faith. I cannot, uh, you know, I cannot, of course, uh, speak about those, the names of those clients. But then there were, there were things that I had to write, which was, which were completely against the teachings of our faith, of our Catholic faith. I had to promote products or ideas which were against or not in, in tangent with uh, our Catholic faith. And that always posed a threat to my faith. I always felt that if I give in too much into these kind of things, I might eventually lose my faith or not be interested in authentic uh, intellectualism, in authentic spirituality, in authentic love and in authentic way of life. So I had to make a conscious decision that either I choose to please God or I choose to please man. That's when, after working for several years in the advertising industry, eventually having learned more and more about the truth and the light of God, I decided, I discerned to leave my job, leave my career in advertising and give myself completely to promoting and marketing and advertising the kingdom of God. You see, my dear friends, when you begin to consume truth, who is Jesus? Because Jesus said, I am the truth. When you consume, when you, when you begin to live under the brightness of the light of Christ, which illuminates every aspect of your life clearly and helps you see things in your life the way God wants you to see, then you have the conviction in your heart. You're constantly being pricked in your conscience to make the right decision, to make the decision of whether you want to please God or you want to please man. And if you truly love Jesus, if you truly love God and if you truly are experiencing the love of God, like how I was experiencing, whether I was in India or in, in uh, or abroad, I was always experiencing the love of God, especially when I was making the wrong choices. God continued to protect me when I was making the wrong uh, when I was making wrong decisions and I was moving around with people who are not supposed to be in my life. God in the background continues to protect me, continue to give me opportunities, continue to make me realize that I am called for a better purpose, for a greater purpose. I am called to do things which the Lord wants me to do. So even though I was being unfaithful, God was being faithful to me. And that is a, 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 a witness. That is uh, the most brightest uh, reason that I can share of how God loved me. And therefore, I had to convince myself, I had to believe that, yes, I need to stop um, pleasing people and I need to please God. And then it goes on to say, uh, or am I trying to please people? If, if I was still trying to please people, I would not be a servant of Christ. If I were still trying to please people, I would not be a servant of Christ. St. Paul speaks about himself. And he is asking us to question the same thing to you and to me. If I am still trying to please people, then am I 
is really a servant of God. If you a servant of God, you can interchange that by saying, am I really a child of God? If you continue to please people, are you still a child of God? I still remember, my dear friends, when I decided to become a full-time Catholic lay missionary, uh, I joined this amazing uh, Catholic lay apostolate called Holy Spirit Interactive, which is spread across several countries in the world doing missionary work and evangelization uh, under, the, under the leadership of um, Anil Arana, the founder of, of this amazing Catholic lay apostolate. I was also uh, associated with Jesus Youth and I, I, I'm so happy to have been formed by Jesus Youth when I was in, in, in Dubai. When I was part uh, of these, as I am part of these movements and these apostolates, it always reminds me of the fact that God always had his heart and his mind on me personally as he does to each one of us. God is personally looking after each one of us. God is personally having a, a God has a plan and he has a personal plan for each one of us. So it these this love and this plan that God constantly reveals to us in different aspects, including through our suffering and our brokenness, it convicts us to uh, uh, by asking our conscience this question that if I'm still trying to please people, am I really a child of God? Am I really a child of God? So when I discerned to be a full timer, it was essential for me to ask myself this question. Should I continue to please God or should I, so, uh, please people or should I please God? So when I began, when I became a full time uh, uh, missionary, uh, in the early months, I would always have my dear, my close friends or even some of my relatives who would ask me, so what are you going to do as work? This is fine. I mean, you know, you're going to preach, you're going to go and do ministry work and all that. But what about your work? Uh, where, how, are you going to, how are you going to manage? Which, are, you, are you not going to work? I would always find that question very funny in the, in, initially. But then I realized that not everybody understands that aspect of giving yourself completely to the work of the kingdom of God because the world has fitted the word work and working in the template of uh, uh, secularism or in, in, in the template of capitalism in the template of uh, you know uh, professional work working in an office or in a company so it was very difficult for people to understand what I'm really doing and then not only that the aspect of being a missionary or giving yourself as a as an evangelist or as a full-time uh, a full-time missionary in the work of evangelization people always try to judge you from the lens of the word so when you do something wrong they will say oh so you have been you've chosen in a life of being a missionary but you are not living up to the expectation of what you are preaching or what you are teaching that is bound to happen but then that is not ever a reason for me to be discouraged because I know that I was not chosen by God because I was a saint I know that I was not chosen by God because I was a perfect person. God chose a very imperfect person. Oh, I know how imperfect I am. But God chose this person so that his light and life can be spread into the world in the ways that God wants to spread. God wanted to make a point with my life into this in this world. And the point that God makes through my life is that no matter how broken you are, no matter how sinful you are, if you are constantly trying to come back to me, I will use you because I love you. That is the point that God is trying to make through my life. And that is exactly the point that God is making in this world through your life, my dear brother, if you are trying your best to be a person that God wants you to be. You will fall. Of course you will fall. I have fallen. I continue to fall. But I don't give up on Jesus. And the reason why I don't give up on Jesus is because Jesus never gives up on me. So when we have convictions of these truths in our heart, when we believe these essential fundamental aspects, these are the things, as John Paul says, which really matter. So when we pay attention to only these things, when we focus on these things, the world, whatever it may say, will not affect too much as much as the word of God should affect us and that's why we will be able to decide that we should stop pleasing people and we should now please God. Um, in um, 
um, in several instances, the word of God reminds us of, of things that we are called to do as men of God. St. Paul's first letter to Timothy chapter 4 verse 8 says, For physical training is of some value, but godliness has value for all things, holding promise for both the present life and the life to come. So coming back to the aspect of moving out of vague spirituality, spirituality which only pleases our senses. Like for example, if we are in church and we are amazed with the singing of the choir of the church and we, and we tell ourselves, oh, I've had a great Sunday service today. Oh, I've enjoyed the mass today because the singing was so good. Or we listen to the homily of the priest and we say, oh, what a homily, Father, you spoke so well. It was such a wonderful mass. And then life stops there as a Christian. What happens after the Mass, what happens after we come out of church really does not please God. So that service that we attended, the homily that we liked, the singing that we liked of the choir, which was supposed to uplift our soul and help us to worship God more and more, more authentically, does not really matter, has not really made any difference. Then we are still in that vague spirituality, spirituality which really does not make any sense. There are people who go and visit the Holy Land. There are people who go and visit other pilgrimages, uh, pilgrimage places. They go on various pilgrimages. And then locally also, wherever you are, you may visit different churches, spend some time praying with the Lord, uh, you know, and spending time with Him. But of, if all these things do not make a change in our life, if all these things do not help us to become better Christians, if all these things do not help us to be those men that God wants us to be, men of respect, men of uh, courage, men of sacrifice, men of prayer, men of love, then all these things don't really matter or they are not making any sense to us or we are not really seeing the message of God in the things that we do. We may be sitting in the presence of God in the church, but our mind is in the presence of something else present somewhere else. So St. Paul says physical training is of some value. But godliness has value for all things. You may be fit in your intellect. You may be, you may be very good in your emotions. You may express yourself marvelously. You may be a very charismatic person. And you may love, you, people may love the way you speak, the way you dress, the way you keep yourself healthy. You keep yourself fit. You keep yourself very attractive to people. But if you do not possess things which are godly in nature. If you do not have your, if you do not have in your heart and in your spirit, the sense of righteousness, the need to be holy, then you will not be enjoying and keeping yourself uh, fit with the things which value not only in this world, but also in the world after, uh, after life on earth. So holding promise for both the present life and the life to come, such are the things which God is expecting us through the words of St. Paul to, uh, to practice. And that is godliness. My dear friends, let us not forget that God has created us and he created us to love him and to love the people whom he has given to us. So let us not forget that we have a purpose in life as men. We are called to rise above things which are ordinary in our spirituality. And even if you are not spiritual, that reminds me, that reminds me, there are many people who, who say that I am not, I am, I am, I am, I am not spiritual, but I am religious. I go to church, I say the rosary. My dear friends, do not forget that each one of us is spiritual, whether we know it or not, whether we like it or not. Each one of us is spiritual. How do we know that? Or rather, how am I able to say that? Because we are all spiritual being created by spirit who is God. And this spiritual being is embodied in the flesh that God has given us, this human flesh, this human body. Our spirit is embodied in this. But we are spiritual beings. We are spiritual beings. Spiritual beings does not mean that that person who is constantly in a church, constantly in, the, in front of the Blessed Sacrament, or who is part of a retreat center, or who is doing missionary work, only they are spiritual persons. No, each one of us is a spiritual person because we have the Spirit of God in us and we are spirits embodied in this flesh. That is the reason why we need to remember that we are called to be like our Father, 
but at the same time god has given us a set of rules and regulations which we are no which which is known to us as a religion and as we are followers of the christian religion as we are catholics we are meant to abide by the law and the word of god together the word of god and the law of his church is equally important for us and that is what godliness means obedience to the word of god obedience to the teachings of the church and this godliness is something which was which is which is necessary not only for us in this world but also in the world to come in the life to come now i would like to remind us of one last thing before i finish and then after after this session we will have a break of about 15 minutes and at 11:30 we will have um one of our very dear friends uh, father richard who is the director of the youth commission of the archdiocese of hyderabad the the archdiocese that my wife and i belong here in hyderabad he is going to be our resource person for the next talk so before that which is going to be at 11:30 india time 11:30 am india time so before that i'd like to conclude with just with reminding you and me of how important it is for us to rise above vague spirituality lukewarm spirituality and enter into spirituality which is authentic extraordinary so that we can be men who are authentic witnesses of christ and that is st paul's first letter to timothy chapter 4 verse 12 don't let anyone look down on you because you are young but set an example for the believers in speech in conduct in love in faith and in purity st paul is specifically speaking to the people who are young but i would like to address this to all men listening right now watching right now including myself do not let people look down on you do not let anyone look down on you why because you are a christian because you are a young man or because you are less less experienced in the word of god or because you are less less experienced in the work of christ or god in your life or your work for god in this world do not let anyone look down upon you especially if you are following jesus especially if you are wanting to be a disciple of jesus and the world does not appreciate that the world is trying to look down on you don't be bothered about those people and those those kind of situations but set an example for the believers set an example for those who wish to believe in jesus set an example by your conduct uh, to those to those people who are wanting who are thirsty who are hungry for jesus who are wanting god in their lives and how do we do that in speech in conduct in love in faith and in purity set an example in speech which means your words should reflect the truth and the love and the light of the word of god your conduct should manifest what god does in this world through you the ones who experience you in their lives the ones who are with you in this world should experience god through you in this world set an example for believers in love love as god demands us to love or has commanded us to love and what is that love one another as i have loved you said jesus jesus loves us unconditionally jesus suffers and died for us jesus takes upon himself our transgressions jesus takes upon himself the punishment that we deserve jesus forgives us again and again jesus is pers- persistently loving us jesus is patient with us so the things that jesus does to us in the name of love for us we are called to love our people we are called to love our neighbor including the people who hurt us so set an example in love set an example in faith your faith should be unshakable my dear friends you are from the lineage of abraham the father of faith you are from the lineage of the great patriarchs such as david you are from the lineage of people who have prophesied the word of god such as elijah and i and isaiah you are from the line from the lineage of people like our blessed mother and saint joseph and the great saints of the of the last few centuries and the uh, from the history of the church and even saints and martyrs of this time we belong to that communion of saints we belong to that eternal family of god who are trying their best even to the extent of giving their lives so that the kingdom of god may flourish you belong to such a community such a family so manifest faith which is authentic and true especially when everything comes falling apart seems falling apart and finally set an example in purity purity of thoughts words and deeds do not give in to those things which the world demands and says it is okay 
Most of the things that the world says it is okay is based on its own experiences, its own comfort, its own adjustments and the way things that can bring happiness to the world. If, th if the world is happy by tweaking, manipulating, changing, shifting gears, then the world is very happy. Especially when God expects something and the world is not happy with it, then the world tries to do some changes into it according to its own satisfaction and says, this is how it is meant to be. And if we too follow that, then we are not setting an example of purity of mind and heart and also words and actions. So set an example to the believers in speech, in conduct, in love, in faith and in purity. Let us pray. God, our loving Father, we praise you and we thank you. We thank you for speaking to us and making us realize that we need to stop being normal Catholics, regular Catholics. We need to stop living vague spirituality, which really does not help us to be authentic disciples. Help us to stop just being people who are formal with our spirituality, who do things as though it is a duty of religious people. It is help us to stop being such mundane people, but help us now with your grace to have a personal relationship with you because we want to be men who are disciples of yours, O Lord Jesus. We want to be men who are true prophets and kings and, and uh, priests of our Lord Jesus. Help us, Lord, to understand this. Help us to live authentic, extraordinary life of witnesses. Through Mary, our mother, we make this prayer in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. My dear friends, thank you for staying with us during this time of the first session. And uh, I'm happy to have shared this word with you. Now I request you to... Share this video as much as possible with your friends and your family and the link of my Facebook profile has been given to you in the previous posts. Uh, if you just scroll down on my profile, you will see you can share that link to as many as possible, especially those of your friends whom you think that who are in need of Jesus or whom you think that they can benefit more in becoming better Catholics. Please share this with your family and friends and help them watch this Facebook live streaming today and tomorrow. We will be sharing the, the, the timing of every session at the end of every session and so that you can be prepared and, and come with us to join us live. And as as soon as possible as early as possible we will also be uploading uh, uh, the the talks on YouTube so that you can watch them whenever you want and share it with whomever you want one last thing please do pray for us every time when you watch these sessions or when you watch them later please do pray for my wife for myself my family and our uh, Catholic lay apostolate called Holy Spirit interactive please do pray for the founder of our ministry Anil Arana who is uh, based in Dubai uh, but now uh, you know doing his ministry work in Mumbai and uh, pray for his family his wife and his children please pray for all the members of Holy Spirit interactive spread in different parts of the world especially those who are full-timers who are trying their best to serve the Lord so my dear brothers and sisters Thank you once again and see you in uh, about 20 minutes or, or less uh, where uh, once again on my profile itself on my Facebook timeline uh, um, I will be hosting a watch party because the next resource person is Reverend Father Richard John the director of the Youth Commission of the Archdiocese of Hyderabad and because of this lockdown uh, and because of the limitation of sharing a live video uh, of another person from another profile on Facebook he is going to be live on his profile and I will share a watch party on my profile so that you can all watch him and listen to his talk. So see you at 11.30 a.m. India time. God bless you.